all throughout Shonen, one of the major pull factors for anime fans besides amazing choreographed fights and fan service are transformations. If you've been an anime fan for a while, you probably noticed authors using the theme of hard work pays off. This theme is pretty common at and pretty much any shonen, we see the protagonist constantly train and train per episode to defeat the obstacle that the author writes in their way. In my experience of watching anime, transformations are usually either extremely rewarding, extremely dragged out, or just flat up armor. But among all these transformations, I want to talk about a certain transformation. A uh, sticky transformation, oh if you will. God. Despite the transformation's goofy and supernatural behavior, everything that leads up towards this transformation lines up with the story's narrative and power creep. And today, that's why I'll be discussing why gear. Oh, wait, no, that's a spoiler. Oh, sh All right, anime only fans or people who don't watch One Piece, this is a spoiler warning. Spoiler warning, I'll be talking about the manga. Shoo, 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 shoo. And that's why today, I'll be discussing why Gear Fifth Luffy is a near perfect transformation. But before we get into all that, thank y'all so much for the support on my last video. Like, I did not expect for my first actual, you know, content YouTube video to actually get as much love as it did. So thank y'all so much. I know y'all heard this a billion times, but leaving a like and subscribing will really mean a lot to me as it would show me that y'all really mess with my content. So yeah, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and let's dive in. Also, comment down your favorite transformation in anime, because I'm going to be rating it from 1 to 10. All right, no more stalling. Let's get into it. Throughout One Piece, despite the advertisements and the games, Oda has always hinted that there's something weird and odd about Luffy. And no, I'm not talking about Luffy's IQ or his lust for meat. Pause. But rather, Luffy's devil fruit, the gumu gumu no mi, or the gum gum fruit. As through 90% of the time in One Piece, we see Luffy utilize his fruit through the properties of both rubber and gum. Notice how I said 90%. Because that 10%, Luffy just be doing some other weird shit. Like Luffy releasing fire out of his fist to make attacks like Red Rock. Like, don't give me no brotherly love BS. There's no way for a rubber man to be doing that. Also, when Luffy was boxing Kaido and Snake Man, he was deflecting his attacks off of air, at which Kaido even said, due to the properties of rubber, that should not be possible. Even going back to post time skip when Luffy used Gear 3rd, where apparently he bit into his bones and blew air to make his fist as big as a giant, which doesn't make sense considering that in your bones, there's no air oxygen pathway where you could just blow air into it. So that in itself is just proven that, you know, Luffy's fruit is a little bit too toony. It's a little bit too, a little bit, a little bit cartoony, to say the least. Overall, before Gear 5's awakening, Oda has made it specifically clear to know that Luffy's fruit is definitely not what it seems. The next subject that we'll be talking about is the build-up. As we all know, One Piece is notorious for its extremely long and depth-filled build-up to give us that sweet, sweet KO screen at the end of each arc, with most, if not all of them, includes Luffy punching somebody in the face. Regardless, these endings do not come easy, especially in Wano, because Luffy got slapped around like a fish. Bro walked into Wano, thought Bounce Man was gonna do something, and got one shot. After Luffy got rest, he did a little training, came back with his Fortnite guild, and went back for the ones, and got 120 punked again! I mean, he managed to tickle Kaido a little bit, but he's called the strongest creature in the world for a reason. After another Zenkai boost, Luffy rides his new glider with along Kaido's mistake to face Kaido one more time. And after all these L's, you would think third time's the charm, right? You know, Luffy surely can't lose another time. Well, you are surely mistaken, because Luffy lost again! Bro, lost so quick, Kaido started dreaming about their fight. Kaido was sitting there like, Yeah, I'm done with this shit, bro. I'll let y'all jump me. I'll let y'all touch me. I'll let y'all get inside me. It's still no Joy Boy. Just a bunch of pirates who think they're him. Wait, what is that melody? Okay, I know for this segment I've been memeing a lot, but basically... Luffy's been through a lot, man. Using all his transformations, utilizing all his training, even using the jumping method from JJK didn't work. Constantly throughout Wano, Luffy has to continuously get stronger, despite getting one shot by Kaido, and despite being weak, and despite the restrictions of Gear 4th and Gear 3rd, 
Luffy has to face all of that and continuously get stronger. But that changes with the transformation I like to call. <laughs> Gear 5 Luffy. Luffy's transformation, which was really controversial, but also really speculated throughout the One Piece fan base. For years at the dress show, so One Piece fans have been speculating what Gear 5 could really be. And most, if not all of them, consisted of Luffy turning black. I, I mean Luffy full conquers hockey coating his body like Virgo. I have nothing against Luffy being black, I'm just saying, just saying. And I mean, no one really expected Luffy's Gear 5 transformation to look like this. Like seriously, it was so confusing that people thought he had Super Saiyan hair. But looking back now, it truthfully makes sense. All those sacrifices and adjustments Luffy made to his body for his friends and family were solely for freedom. We all know throughout One Piece, Luffy is very acquainted with the term of freedom. And this power up exemplifies it even more, bringing it into reality, I would say. Okay, okay, that was a good one, you can't lie. The Gear 5 both figuratively and literally exemplify Luffy's freedom and his path to power. No longer does he have to bite into his thumb to have Gear 3rd abilities when he could just do that off rip. No longer does he need Bounce Man to hover in the air when he could just walk on air. Now Luffy doesn't have to worry about time restrictions like his other gears, but all he has to worry about now is his life force. And we see multiple times throughout One Piece he's willing to get that away for freedom of his crewmates. Also, Gear 5 coming off as a goofy-ish transformation only makes sense because Luffy's always been a goofy character. A goofy character who seems to find joy in any situation that he's in and it can always bring people laughs. Only makes sense as to why in Gear 5 he acts like a crackhead. Which is extremely fitting for Luffy, but it also kind of nerfs him a bit because then he'll never take fights seriously. Well, time will tell. Until then, we're definitely going to see a lot more Rubber House-like animations from Toei. And that's the video. If you guys like the video, make sure to like the video, subscribe if you want more. I'm Talk to. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.